Hi everyone, Kate here. I just wanted to spend a little bit of time today and give you the rundown on why you would want to hire a certified decorator to help you with your plans for your house. Um, quite often you know what the end game is, you know what you want, but you're not sure how to get there. And when there's a lot of decisions to be made, it helps to have a professional that can that can guide you um, certain directions on how to choose. So Dave and Grace gave me a call and said, we've got a beautiful house. Um, it's got lots of angles and it's got um, raised ceilings, but it needs an update. So I said, okay. I went out to their home, beautiful home, and uh, we started talking about it. So when I come to the house, I usually like to get a bit of a tour so that I can figure out, you know, what they're looking for, what their style is, and then ask guided questions for that reason. You know, I see if they have antiques in the house. I see if it's ultra modern. I see if there's a lot of orange in the house and that's a color that they favor or maybe blue or gray, you know, it could be anything. But I notice it more than they might, especially in artwork. You know, people love their pictures. They put them up and they, they don't realize that they're, it's giving a blue hue or whatever. So um, that's why you hire somebody like me. You call me, I come to your home, and we do a consultation. So this is kind of the results of the consultation. I haven't included everything. Uh, there is one, one piece that I'll talk to you about. So we, in this case, they wanted to redo the kitchen cabinets because they were very gold and they felt that um, it was time for an uplift. So they've got darker walls, pardon me, and the, um, the cabinets are, are the gold and the darker walls, and they're just feeling like it's a little outdated. So what we've done is, pardon me, I got an eyelash in my eye. What we've done is we've figured out a color scheme for them. Now they wanted to lighten everything up, but they didn't want too much stuff. So, gosh, got a real problem here. There we go. Okay, so they wanted to lighten things up, but still have some color and give it some life. And it's a very large expanse. It's the front entry hall going into the living room, going up the stairs, down the stairs, and into the kitchen. So we've got a lot of space to cover. And there's lots of angled walls, vaulted ceilings, all different ways. So it was quite a challenge. And as we sat and talked about things, Grace said she wanted something very neutral. She's, you know, really trying to keep things um, soft, neutral, and not crazy out of budget because they wanted to think that maybe in five years they may want to move to a smaller place. So what we did was we talked about painting the kitchen cabinets. Now to me that's going to be a huge difference because they have a full wall of kitchen cabinets. And so all of the trim in their house is Benjamin Moore um, cloud white. So I could see that the trim was in really good shape and there really wasn't any reason to change that. But we were going to look at colors on how we could change the color on the wall. So if we did cloud white on the cabinets to match the trim, then what were we going to do on the walls? So there was two suggestions here. One was 
Elmira White, but they have a fairly bright house and that really looked too light to me. So then the other option was Manchester Tan. So Manchester Tan keeps things very warm. Their ceramic tile uh, in the kitchen has grays and tans and just a little bit of an orangey cast. And also the floor has an orangey cast to it in the living room and front entry. So we're looking at this and that's good. And then they've got an angled island. So, you know, a lot of you have seen this in 80s houses, you know, where they cut the corner and raised it up at the one side and kept it low at the other side. Well, Grace and, and Dave are, are tired of that. And they want to level off the cabinet. So they want to get one size, one height of countertop. So I went and we picked out, I picked out three slabs. Now, normally I will only um, choose three options because any more than that, you're going to get confused. And you kind of know what you want anyway. So this is where trust comes in. You trust me to choose the right thing. So I gave them three choices. They went and had a look and um, got their, uh, took their uh, colors with them and picked a slab. So that's been chosen. Now they have to figure out how to get the top off of the cabinet because it is angular and her sink is in there and they have to keep the sink. So, um, They've got to keep it functional for now. So then we looked at ceramic tile, which I will show you, which is right here. So what I did was, because we're going very neutral here, I wanted them to be able to have some choices. So these tiles are all slightly shaded. This is a... A very popular trend right now is to give some some color but also variegate the color throughout the the backsplash so um, after time we have worked out that this is one of the best ones now this is two and a half inches by ten inches and if we do it in the chevron pattern that will add some interest to the cabinets and the countertop because the countertop is going to be an, uh, an off-white with some veining in it. Now the other thing is for the, for the island, we're going to do, try to get this here, for the island we're going to do Cabot Trail. And the reason we're doing that is because it pulls up the colors in the tile because the, tile, the ceramic tile is dark. It's dark tones. And so this is going to be the cabinet. And the reason for that is because if we did it the cloud white, there's three stools on the island. So if we do it cloud white, then as people sit there, they can bang the cabinet and you're going to find that there's a lot of marks on it over time. So if we deepen the color of it a little bit, it gives some added interest and it also doesn't show any marks. So here we are with these and this in the chevron pattern and we're going to paint all the cabinets. So the cabinets, um, the, the painter is going to come. He's going to take off the doors. He's going to take them back to his shop. He's going to spray them. They'll be primed, two coats of finished coat. And then they'll be brought back after he paints all the boxes, the bare boxes for your, your cabinets. Now, the reason we chose that was because it's cost effective. 
Now, you can also um, have a cabinet company come and they can measure for new doors. So if you have doors with the, with the curves on the top or whatever carved into them, uh, you can go to, you know, shaker style with just plain bands if you're, you know, moving to modern farmhouse, something like that. So in this case, we're painting the cabinets and that's pretty much got the kitchen looked after. So then we move into the living room. Now the living room has kind of orangey colored wood floors. They're beautiful. And so what we're doing with that is, now the customer has the, the sample of the rug, but this is, this is an idea of it. Now this is an eight by 10 and it's got beautiful pattern to it. Just just colors. It's got the tans, it's got the browns, it's got the off-whites, and it's got that kind of orangey color that, that picks up on, on everything in the, in the living room. So if we go with the Manchester tan on the walls, the one big kind of hiccup in this whole thing is that we have a fireplace that has not just this, but it has a second mantle up here. And this is roughly about the color of their, of their floors. So what I suggested was that they put a cupboard on either side with shelves because they don't have a lot of storage. They're avid readers and uh, get, get people over and they, they have games nights and everything like that. So this gives them the storage for the games. It also gives them lots of storage for books and pictures, that idea, and a little extra light at, in the evening. And this one has shiplap going up on here. So if we get rid of the second mantle and put the shiplap on, it will improve the whole end of the living room. It fills the end, it doesn't look so cavernous, and uh, it, it just warms everything up. So then if we have this area rug, along with it, let me see, we'll fold things here. So if we have the area rug on the floor, it pulls up these colors. And then we were talking about the windows. They've got a huge front window, but they don't want to feel like they're in a fishbowl. So um, what they have is they have pull down blinds, but they still feel like almost like it's echoey in the room. And that's because there isn't enough fabric in there, soft fabrics in there to absorb sound. So my suggestion was put this area rug down and to hang drapery panels on either side of the window. And these are lined drapery panels. They're, um, they can be, this company is, is semi-custom. So it's not, um, these are fully lined uh, panels. You can get different types of tops for it and uh, good quality without being over the top. So we've, we've got that decided. So their choice, they've got this beautiful chocolate brown sofa and chair. So you can see where, <laughs> deciding how to do this, you can see where this drapery would emulate the rug, pull in the orange, and look great with the brown, as well as having Manchester tan. Try to get this all in on one thing for you. 
Manchester tan on the walls. So I had given them three choices for drapery. This one, this one if you wanted it really neutral, or this one because it looked very good with the floors and the, the chocolate um, furniture. So there's still a little bit of debate about which one it will be, this one or this one. But as you can see, I've pulled this all together for them so that they can then have their own game plan and we can work together on this. I can help them with, with you know, finishing it. But this gives them the biggest chunk of the plan on how they want to do things. And I do this as a portfolio and I do a write-up also so that they know for the kitchen, this is the, you know, the suggestion. For the living room, this is the suggestion. The front entry hall was just mostly paint, but we're also uh, changing the front door, which we, we worked on choosing that also. And uh, in the kitchen, it's a kitchen dining room, there's a, an antique table and it has um, press back chairs. Now, if anybody knows about press back chairs, they're beautiful to look at, but they're not that comfortable for um, people my age now. Um, as you have everybody around and you eat dinner, you like to sit there and maybe lounge over coffee and, and dessert. So um, we looked for a new um, chair that would work with the other with the table and this is a little darker and this is a picture that i got off of their website and it and it is fuzzy like that but you can see that this has brown um upholstery on it and it's just right in with all their tones and this has warmed up the inside of the house it just when i hold these things up in the house it just looks absolutely gorgeous so we'll keep you up to date, and maybe Dave and, and, um, and Grace will let us do a little video of the tour of the house when it gets finished. So thanks for joining me today. We'll see you soon.